Okay, I'm here in kind of an out of the way location, not a not a you know hiking destination or a place most people know about. Uh, this is some of the white sandstones that are part of the Carmel Formation uh, near the Perea River, halfway between Kanab and Page along uh, Highway 89. You can see a lot of the white sandstone uh, just beneath me here, and then kind of looking up, it kind of grays into more of a, a reddish mudstone sandstone sequence. But the white sandstones here are kind of your classic cross-bedded sandstones that you see uh, in the southwest that form slot canyons, which is going to be something we're going to look at here and some of the other features in here. We're, we're only a mile or so from the, the White House uh, campground, which is south of Highway 89. I'll put a GPS location uh, with the notes for this video. Um, but what we want to look at here is a really peculiar feature um, that looks similar to things you see in the southwest in the Colorado Plateau region, but has a really different origin. And so we've got this sandstone here, this cross bedded sandstone. Maybe we'll come down here uh, to this little drainage and look at this in a little bit more detail. Um, but we're going to walk up a little ways to something really unique here. Most of the slot canyons we see in the southwest are formed from sandstone very similar to this and they're formed when we have flash floods and water erosion cutting through this this soft relatively soft but homogeneous material it's pretty much all the same grain size of sand um, so it cuts through it pretty readily a lot of the slack canyons are formed where there's already a pre-existing weakness in the sand, so maybe a fracture or something like that, that the water can exploit and then excavate as it cuts down um, with the sandstone. So the main channel, the main wash is actually down here. Um, so you can see there's a there's a, some sort of drainage down here that's cut this little valley here. Um, but I've kind of come up this little riser and there's kind of a little secondary channel here. Um, but what's interesting about it as you come up is it doesn't appear to have a really large drainage area. You know, maybe a little bit of water coming off of these cliffs here would funnel into this thing. It also has a kind of an interesting, uh, there's almost like a right angle here. You've got this, this vertical wall here, uh, and then the flat, val the flat bottom floor transitions kind of sharply through here. And then most peculiar of all, again, real quick, so, not a lot of drainage area. In fact, if you walk far enough up here, you'll see that there's another little gully that would actually uh, funnel all the water off these cliffs here, would come down into this little gully here and then down into the main wash. So kind of begs the question, why would we have this kind of broad little gully here and then the real peculiar feature we want to look at is this very short but very interesting slot canyon that kind of comes off the side of this other one and this is uh, called the nautilus uh because i guess in map view it kind of has a spiral shape kind of like a chambered uh, nautilus shell so you can see this thing's cut down uh, in places it's maybe 15 almost 20 feet deep something like that it's we'll walk through this it's quite short and it's narrowest it's only a few feet wide and it kind of has this kind of corkscrew shape here almost like a water slide um and it would be very reasonable to just assume that this is formed by water erosion because that's the dominant mechanism again with so many of these slot canyons in the colorado plateau region but with a little bit closer observation i think we'll find that there's uh, a second a different mechanism that's created this this slot canyon here and so the first big clue is um it doesn't have much of a drainage area in fact you know maybe a little bit of water but the water coming off those cliffs would most likely run down this little channel over here which again has a little bit uh, interesting shape so very limited drainage area in order to cut something that deep even though this sandstone is somewhat soft you'd expect there to be a lot bigger area for the water to get funneled and collected and then driven down into uh, the canyon so the first clue we have here as we kind of look at this thing um as we look at the walls of this canyon 
there's some interesting sort of cuts like this this transition here from this sandstone face to this one uh, is pretty abrupt and we can actually see that the sandstone here has a little bit of varnish on it this this is an older surface whereas this white surface here has been cut much more recently as we come back up a little higher and even on the floor you can kind of see these kind of ripply features again where it's been actively eroded and then there's an older preserved sandstone surface there so it's cut on the up up upstream end and the older surface is, is kind of on the downside there um and then i think what's most telling is if we get down here a little bit further this is where it gets kind of tight here but on the walls especially on this wall of the canyon there are a little bit harder sections of the sandstone with a little bit more iron in it the little kind of iron concretions or sometimes people call these where they're rounded they're sometimes called moki marbles but we can see these nice little flutes kind of moving in that direction in, in the downstream direction but it's not down on the on the canyon f floor it's up on the walls of the canyon. So most of this sandstone is really grainy. You can just sit here and rake the sand off with your hand. Um, but then you get down to these features here. And again, we can see the, the sort of down canyon uh, orientation around this harder kind of perturbance there. Here's another little one there with a similar feature. Uh, and then the thing just kind of as we kind of look back up, it kind of comes down through here, corkscrews around, and then empties into uh, the bigger wash down there. And so uh, geologists have looked at this, and the conclusion that was reached here, and I agree with it, I think this is very sound, um, is this is a slot canyon carved by wind. We really don't think about wind a lot as a dominant erosive process, but here we have really clear evidence, these, these things we looked at on the walls, are similar to what we see in desert regions where wind shapes harder rocks um, and leaves sort of a little trail of sand or shape behind it. These are called ventifacts. So these ventifacts on the walls are definitely evidence for wind erosion. Uh, the orientation of this canyon agrees well with dominant wind directions. Actually yesterday there was really strong south and southwesterly winds like up to 30 40 miles an hour you can imagine it mobilizing all the sand in the washes um just to our our uh, our west here and bringing that sand up out of the wash along this drainage and then over time that sand is an abrasive action so it's it's acting just like water would the water actually carries little bits of sand and gravel that chips away at the sandstone to erode it in this case it's the wind that's carrying the sand and it's chipping into this relatively soft sandstone here that you can just kind of just kind of push it away like sugar a little bit and make it abrasive. Here's some other little wind features, uh, these little kind of cavities here. So the wind is actually creating, oh, there's a big bug in that one there. I don't know if you can see that, he's kind of deep in there. Um, anyway, the wind is actually creating some of these, these cool features here. So just a really cool spot, a very different, it's short, it's not super exciting, but a definitely a different formation or process involved with creating this little slot canyon here called the Nautilus in Southern Utah, right near the Utah-Arizona border. Pretty sweet.